This video has been classified as M. It is recommended for people aged 15 years and over. His contributions are both innumerable and extraordinary, and we thank him for letting us be a part of it all. Thank you, Rupert, and congratulations. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And no, Rupert Murdoch hasn't died, but he is handing the reins to his son Lachlan and stepping aside as chair of Fox Corp and News Corp. And that had the world's media going gaga over what it means and whether the old fox is really pulling the pin the outgoing chair saying that he will be emeritus chairman going forward, that is to stay actively involved in the discussions and the decision making of the day. Yes, Rupert has crowned himself chairman emeritus, which means he could still be in the boardroom. With CNN's Oliver Darcy pointing out there's been no sign of the R word. I don't think anyone's ever going to say that Rupert Murdoch is going into retirement. I don't think that's <laughs> something that he's capable, those words he's not capable of uttering. And to confirm he'll still be taking an interest, Rupert told his employees in a memo. He's been, quote, engaged daily with news and ideas, and that will not change. And he says he will still be an active member of the Fox community, reaching out with thoughts and ideas and advice as he does every day. And turning up in their offices late on Friday afternoons. Clearly not a man who's off to the bowls club. So why is he, quote, transitioning and not working till they take him out in a box? Well, Rupert is 92, and while he claims his health is robust, he has had a number of recent scares. According to Gabriel Sherman in Vanity Fair, he was in hospital in London in 2022 with a bad case of COVID, and... In recent years, Murdoch has suffered a broken back, seizures, two bouts of pneumonia, atrial fibrillation, and a torn Achilles tendon, a source close to the mogul told me. Many of these episodes went unreported in the press, which was just how Murdoch liked it. So, what will the decision mean in practice? Well, don't expect Sky News or Fox News to veer to the left, and don't expect News Corp columnists to suddenly start worrying about global warming. Because while Lachlan may not be as interventionist as his father, he appears to be even more conservative. And as Rupert puts it, he is committed to the cause of freedom, which had the left-leaning New Republic conclude, Rupert Murdoch's Fox successor is his son, and he's just as bad. And how bad is bad? President Obama recently accused Rupert of being responsible for polarising society. Former PM Malcolm Turnbull charges him with doing enormous damage to the democratic world. And the CEO of the Liberal Media Matters for America went even further last week, claiming... Rupert Murdoch's legacy is one of deceit, destruction and death. In Fox News, Murdoch created a uniquely destructive force in American democracy and public life. One that ushered in an era of division, where racist and post-truth politics thrive. But tell that to Andrew Bolt, who beamed into Sky News early in the morning to praise the boss's brilliance. Such a genius. It's not just his love of ideas and his energy and endless curiosity, but he actually picked the segments of the market that people weren't catering to in the media business, and that is conservative parts of the market. Andrew Bolt is close to his new boss, Lachlan, and so is Sky News chief Paul Whittaker, who had the network line up some of Rupert's biggest fans to tell us what they loved about him most. Rupert Murdoch has employed so many thousands of journalists, breaking millions of stories over many years, speaking truth to power and giving opportunities to journalists such as myself. He is an extraordinary man with amazing energy optimism, but also I think when he looks at someone he sees 10 years beyond, which is also a superpower he's had. I can remember uh, going to have lunch at his home in, uh, in the hills outside LA and um, uh, just to sit there and watch him eat lamb chops was, um, was quite an honour. And the front page of the Weekend Australian joined the suck-up with this extraordinary headline to celebrate Rupert's career. Enduring resolve to fight for freedom and the truth. Like uh, spreading Trump's big lie, which cost Fox News 800 million US dollars in damages, and hacking phones, which cost News UK more than one billion pounds. 
causing the shovel to quip on Twitter. Hate it when that other satirical news outlet copies our stuff. Oxford-educated billionaire emails staff from private yacht telling them to keep fighting elites. But, as we said, we suspect that Rupert's not leaving yet and the real change will come when he dies, when the real-life succession could play out. With Rupert gone, his four eldest children would each have one vote in the family trust and there is speculation they could gang up against Lachlan and force him out. Or as Stephen Main told the ABC... Some media reports have said that it's 3-1 against Lachlan and once Rupert goes, the adult children will back James and Lachlan will get fired. Some media reports and a great plot for TV drama, but absolutely no guarantee that it will happen. Meantime, we reckon it'll be business as usual, with the Fox News host who delivered the news keen to reassure viewers and the markets that the old Fox is not going far. Not stepping aside, this is just a transition yeah. and we're very excited for and the next you. step on that. Yeah, thank you. But now to a media reckoning over Russell Brand, who was unhappily hogging the headlines until Murdoch took over. Yeah, that's cheer the idea of sex. Sex, the love of it, the dogged, unashamed pursuit of it, Russell Brand's thing. Now tonight, off stage, it sees him accused of rape, sexual assault, controlling and abusive behaviour. Russell Brand is a comedian, actor and TV star whom the British media helped create. And for decades, they've laughed along with his jokes and womanising, crowning him Shagger of the Year, while giving him a platform on the BBC, Channel 4, The Guardian and then an actor in Hollywood films. But in the past week, Brand has become a pariah, with those same media outlets disowning him after an explosive investigation by Channel 4, The Times and Sunday Times all but blew up his career. Accused, Russell Brand, the sex predator who hid in plain sight. The investigation was four years in the making and involves allegations of assault or rape from four women who remain anonymous. One of whom, Alice, as Brand well knew, was only 16 years old at the time. He um, forced his penis down my throat and I couldn't breathe. It was just choking me and I couldn't breathe. I was pushing him away and pushing him away and he wasn't, he wasn't backing off at all. Brand was 30 and a BBC radio presenter, with the then 16-year-old making claims, which the BBC is investigating, that Brand had her chauffeured from her school to his home in BBC cars. As one of the journalists involved in the expose told Channel 9... He taught her to lie to her parents about who she was with. And the second woman, Nadia, I would say has the strongest evidence I've ever seen in any Me Too story that I've worked on. She's given us her medical notes and text messages between her and Russell where she says, no means no, and then he apologises afterwards. So how shocked should the media be by these claims of assault and rape, which Brand strenuously denies? Because when it came to Randy Russell's heyday in the noughties, sex was his brand. With the British media in 2006 happily advertising his sex tips and inviting his conquests to tell their tales. He got me naked and pounded on top of me like a rabid dog, looking at me with those crazed eyes. It was headlines like those that helped make brand a household name. And behaviour like this as a host of Channel 4's Big Brother spin-off. Just as she prepares to eat it, I'll drape my ball bag. Oh, here, see you off. touch my thigh, keep yourself <laughs> occupied. Right, well, OK. Just... Pull down my trousers and pants. Wanked my dinkles, you selfish bitch. You are drunk. Shut up, you whores. And if you think that looks bad now, this looks even worse. With Channel 4 digging up this 2007 BBC interview by Brand with then media legend, Jimmy Savile. It'd be very nice to meet you one day, Mr Jimmy Savile, just, well, you know... if you've got a sister, you could meet me by bringing her along. Brand said he did not have a sister, but could send along his personal assistant, whom he described as very attractive. Would you like her to wear anything in, in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. Right, so you want my assistant to meet you naked? OK, well, that's, that's not going to be... that's not going to be a problem. Last week, British journalist Emily Matlis called that exchange the archive for the ages. One prolific dead paedophile joking about grooming with a man who this past weekend has been accused of rape and sexual assault live on Radio 2, live on the most listened to radio station in the country. But at the time, no one in the UK media batted an eyelid. 
and it was the same in Australia. When Randy Russell was here in 2009, Seven's Andrew O'Keefe introduced the star like this. He's also a well-known womanizer, a philaholic, a bit of a Don Juan, which is why we sent Sam to meet him. And what followed was Sam Armitage in the frame and everyone having a laugh. Another female host, Fifi Box, endured similar treatment the following year in another interview for Sunrise, which was never broadcast, but was posted online. And two years later, it was Liz Hayes on the front line for 60 Minutes. <laughs> All right, Liz, we goodbye. Were, yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a wonderful sleep. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> Russell. All right, that's OK. <laughs> Russell, how can I do your bra just like this? <laughs> The media did not call that out either, because Brand's sexual antics were all part of the show. When he appeared on Nova FM in 2009, the station organised eight single women to hang around with him in the studio. While the project gave him 15 minutes in 2015 to thrill the audience and offer another round with Fifi Box. I will not leave take a break. till Fifi and I have a 25-year-old child. Okay. <laughs> Stay with us until that happens. We'll be back in a moment. But last week on the project, the host struck a very different tone. Is your discomfort with the material itself? Or is it only with viewing it through the lens of the last couple of days? I, I would think say it's with that. Both. So, is the media being hypocritical? Yes, says veteran broadcaster Andrew Neil, telling Piers Morgan. It's pretty clear there was some egregious behaviour going on here, some behaviour that anybody should be ashamed of, and that major media companies were complicit. And I think we're seeing a lot of hypocrisy now, because I see all these people now rushing to disassociate themselves yeah. from Russell Brand. Well, I would ask a fundamental question. Why were they ever associated with him in the first place? Answer, he brought ratings, cachet and a younger audience. And he wasn't only welcome on TV. In 2013, Brown was invited to be a guest editor for The New Statesman, and he was a columnist at The Guardian for several years. Now that same masthead is accusing the media of complicity in Brand's misogyny and lashing out at the hideous lad culture of the 2000s. Also rushing to disassociate itself is Channel 4, who along with the BBC has taken down almost all Russell Brand's past appearances from their streaming services, with the Channel 4 boss telling a TV conference last week... What is clear to me is that terrible behaviour towards women was historically tolerated in our industry. And the clips we've seen as well provide a rather shocking jolt when one realises what appeared on air not that long ago. As some have pointed out, what Brown was doing on TV is not illegal. And while he's been accused of sexual assault and rape, he's not been charged with any crime. He insists he has committed none, even though the media have rushed to find him guilty. And that was at the core of his defence last week. The relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? Another agenda? What could he mean? In recent years, Brand has reinvented himself on YouTube with a stream of anti-establishment, anti-imperialist and often nutty conspiracy videos. Do not critique the pharmaceutical industry. These aliens, are they sexy or not? Hello, Black Rock here, and this is my friend, Dark Crystal and Darth Vader. These have brought Brand a huge following across the world, with six million subscribers. And he claims the media investigation and assault allegations are an attempt to shut him down. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you, you're getting too close to the truth. And Twitter, Tesla and SpaceX tycoon Elon Musk apparently agrees, tweeting... They can't say they want censorship, so they attack by other means. It is crazy stuff, and no doubt it plays well with Russell's many fans. But it's not going to save his reputation or get him off the hook if charges are laid. And finally, let's come back to Earth and a violent stabbing at Canberra's Australian National University, which had Nine's Carl Stefanovic telling viewers... As parents, we send our kids off to school, and in this case, university, and we have faith that schools and higher education can handle emergencies. The response time from the attack to arrest on Monday was 30 minutes. 30 long minutes to control an alleged offender. The alleged offender has now been charged with two counts of attempted murder, with Carl protesting it took too long for help to arrive. God knows what could have happened. A young woman was taken to hospital in a critical condition. There she is. 30 minutes is simply not good enough. Imagine if it was terrorism. 
And the ANU's supposed failure to protect its students struck a personal nerve. I've just sent my daughter to university. If it was me, I'd feel completely and utterly let down by the response from the university. ANU let down its community. Strong words, heartily endorsed by co-host Sarah Arbo. Yeah, well Sarah. said, Carlos. It must have been absolutely terrifying for them. Clearly Nine also loved Carl's hard-hitting editorial because it then published it online. But there's one big problem with the rant. The story is rubbish. The timeline is wrong and Carl should apologise. As media coverage, including on Nine, made clear the day before... Police and uh, security staff and ambulance officers were on the scene very quickly. Ophel was quickly detained and arrested. The ANU praised the quick actions of staff, students and emergency services. All those reports, including from the Canberra Times, refer to the quick response, which, as we're about to show you, was nothing like... 30 minutes. With the ANU sending its Chancellor, Julie Bishop, to correct Carl the following day. But let me set out the facts. It was 11 minutes from the time of the attack to the time that the man was taken into custody. Yep, 11 minutes from start to end. And ACT policing say it was only four minutes between the triple O call and the man being detained. So, did Carl apologise to viewers for getting it so wrong? He did not. And we reckon Julie Bishop let Carl off lightly. But they are good mates, with the former foreign minister even flying to his Mexican wedding five years ago. We asked Nine if Carl was going to fess up to his mistake. We did not hear back. But at least Nine News has now taken down the online story after we sent them some questions. That's all from us for tonight. Don't forget Media Bytes on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. But for now, until next week, goodbye. <laughs>